Guess what, everybody? We got a great show here today with Terry Christine. The two first names in one. This is going to be really fun. She's from Maryland here today, and she reached out to me some time ago, um, really trying to promote herself and get herself out there on as many podcasts, which I highly recommend that to anybody out there listening. If, if you're looking for a way to share yourself um, to the world, um, these podcasts are one of the most effective way to do it because their audiences are very direct. They're very specific and they're great audiences because you know what? They're, they're taking the time to listen. It's not CNN or anything like that. This is the real deal. The real people saying the real things. So we've got Terry Christine here today and, uh, I want to say hello to you guys out there. So say hello. Hey, Dennis. Thanks. I'm really glad that we got together and we're making this happen. <laughs> yes, me too. We've been going back and forth. We've had, uh, you know, those message wars you do and, I'll be honest, my messages kind of got piled up. It's been like a really crazy week with the elections going on and and propaganda and this and that and podcasts and this and that. So my emails and stuff, I'm always a, a good guy to call instead of message. So I kind of tell a lot of people that, you know, just call me. I'm, I answer the phone. I'm one of those people who do answer the phone. Some people don't, but I do. And um, so we're going to talk right. today. We're going to talk and we're going to tell you about intuitive. Why are you an intuitive coach? Uh, so, you know, it's, it's just energy. So everybody has intuition. It's just, they call it coincidence. There is no coincidence. And what I do is I just take it to a deeper level. I connect to that core false belief, that block that's holding that person back. And so energetically, I just connect. I just have these superpowers where I can hear, feel, and see, which is called clairvoyant, clairaudient, and clairsentient. And then I just connect to it and do some energy statements and shazam it out. <laughs> like It's just like that easy? <laughs> it is that easy. There is a little bit extra stuff that happens, but usually it's the person that you know, has their own program patterns or they're stuck in a rut or they can't even see that their own negative thoughts, words, and actions are causing them to be in that rut and so that they can't move forward. So um, with connecting to the energy, I will, uh, we have an hour conversation and I just sort of tell them, hey, I heard you using a lot of the I think, which means a person is disconnected from their own trusting right? Or I hope, which holds them back from stepping into anything because hope just has you standing there waiting for it to happen to you. So usually I'll listen for keywords or um, patterns of well, what they're doing or expressing. I can hear vibration in words so then I can help them kind of shift it up and out. I, you know, I really am a big fan of this kind of stuff. I mean, I, I, know, I didn't use the, uh, the word on intuition for it, but uh, similar words, but, um, I'm really, really big with this and I actually did some courses on it. I think this is just really where like the total missing link is for people because it's, it's if you understand intuition, right? Just the awareness itself just changes the direction of everything. It really opens, like, like you said before, it, it opens up the direction to where people can go and, and see and do. For example, just walking down the street, there's always, I always have begun living by the rule that in front of you at any point in time is opportunity for something mm -hmm. somehow somewhere, but you have to have an intuition and, and sharpen your intuition to find that, that opportunity mm -hmm. because it's there. There's, you know, there's a lot of books written as, you know, you can put a, you know, f think about a field with, you know, dirt and you got a shovel and w I'm going to tell you that there's an opportunity three feet below the dirt. You just have to dig it up and find it and you can make it fun or you can make it complicated, but th there is a, there is a treasure there. And by you teaching this, um, I'm a big fan of it. Thanks. And you know, I take it one step further. Every time I have a session with someone, we first start off, tell me about your aha moments. Because when I have them focusing on all the positive and the things that are going on, then they're seeing all the positive and erasing and letting go of the negative and then creating that pattern to do that. Yeah. You know, it's funny how us as human beings, we somehow def d default to the negative negative. I don't know why we do. We just, it's like the default. You know, if you don't keep up the spirits, you don't keep them going, you go into the sigh of negativity. It's, I wonder if like, if white life was switched around where you defaulted to the, <laughs> to the higher energy versus the low energy and why that's all cause and why that's actually happening. Why does it have to be that way? It's really interesting, but you're right. It's like, we always have to kind of fuel, um, energize, educate that higher energy. So, you know, what happens is think about that as you're growing up. 
Most false beliefs are created before the age of seven between a caregiver such as your mom or your dad. It doesn't mean that they're physically or emotionally abusive. It simply means that you as a child with the child brain took in something in that time and space that you wanted, you needed, or you're going, ah, you know, and, and owning it. And so what happens is that as the child comes out, the parents are, you know, raising the child saying, don't do that. Don't say that. Be quiet. If you did this, you're not going to get that. So you're already hearing all the negative stuff that's being bombarded with you from your teachers and your friends and your family. And so here you are as an adult. And so your first thing to do is go to the negative. And what I actually do is when I work with my clients, as I tell them to focus on the aha moments, then I tell them what kind, what their patterns in their voice or what they're saying to themselves or to other people and having them be really aware of what they're saying. Because it really does start with some of the simple things that people are really disconnected from. Mm. You know, it's it's funny because you remember when you were a kid, you like you're relentlessly like when you had something you wanted, you really you went after it and, with no limits. And now when we get old, like you said, we have all these programs that get us in the way. Well, you know, there's, there's rules, there's regulations, there's this, there's that, there's this, there's that. You know, people are going to look at me funny if I say something. If I stand up for something, then I'm going to have to, you know, get the backlash and, and all this stuff. Um, you're right. It's, and, but how do we, or how do you uh, rewind that? So, you know, with the intuitive part, I spent five years on a psychic website. <laughs> yeah, so I was a psychic advisor and people would call me and I, I considered that my psychic play box, you know, the play play a sandbox, you know, you could play every day that you're on it with people. And, you know, I just spent time connecting to the energy and, you know, over a, uh, a time frame, you do see patterns and, you know, technically with the intuition, when I can close my eyes, I can see a movie or I can hear full blown sentences or words, conversations sometimes, or feeling it. And so what I'll do is that I'll ask questions inside of my head saying, okay, what's the strongest block that Dennis has? And then I, it's usually mom or dad. So I'll ask mom or dad and I'm always, you know, I'll see it and I'll hear it. And then I'll go for your age and then I'll see what happened because it's a movie. And then what I do is I'll explain what I saw, heard and felt. And then I'll take it to your personality and explain it. And then I'll say, that's where your block is. And then I'll do energy statements to clear it then give some homework like mirror technique or what will it takes, which, you know, asking questions to the universe so that you can bring forward what you want in your life, setting intents, things like that. People forget that if you set an intent, you're pushing yourself saying, I want this. I'm going to set my intent. It's almost like writing it down, but you're saying it out loud or in your head to the universe. So you're kind of writing it down for them to bring it forward to you. And so I help people to really hone in and say, wow, I had this, this situation. My, that's an example. Mom and dad got a divorce when I was five and it was really not, not that great. I didn't see my dad and we were really close and it's a guy, it's a boy and we were really close. And now there's the lack of masculine male energy and the mom had to do the double duty or maybe she got a boyfriend who wasn't so attentive. So then what happens is that that child will start picking up uh, abandonment maybe because dad left or if dad's still involved, maybe not being good enough because dad didn't stay. So it depends on what that child is taking in so that I really do go to the core block and help them release that so that they can say, I am worth it. I do deserve these things. That money isn't a survival mechanism. I'm not strangle holding it, you know, that it's just all energy mm -hmm. and to move free into all of that. That's, that's, that's beautiful. That's just really cool because it's, it's that easy, but we just don't understand that it's that easy is to just, okay, this is, this is what's stopping things, you know, and just, yeah. and to I be, mean, there's some, right. And there's some things that you know, people think that they have to clearly understand and define what it is that's holding them back, let's say in their business. I've had many business professionals come to me and, you know, with jumping to the next level of finances. So it can be as simple as what you took in when you're little. If you're feeling that you lived in a home that was, you know, um, middle class, but then your business is dealing with higher level clients, then you struggle with accepting that thinking, well, I'm just, you know, and again, it's what the child chose to take in, in that time to own it saying, I'll never be able to get to that. And then here they are 
always struggling with the next client who could be something that could make it easy for them to expand their business. So some of those things can affect the business. Oh yeah, definitely. It, it, I, I've seen it happen in my life. I know with business and so on and so forth, it's like you want to grow, you want to make a million dollars, but with that in my business particular, I was in, or this business now it's, you know, you grow, you, you, you're a service, you're an inspirational speaker, you're, you're, you know, got employees, you're giving them expectations and you do great things for them. But when, as a number grows, as the dollars get higher, you're not able to execute all that because now you have other people executing for you and you now I start getting like oh my god they're not getting treated right you know this is not going to happen my customer's not getting exactly what I thought my 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 model was and so on and so forth so I start getting my head that like it's getting out of control it's getting out of control yeah I'm growing I'm growing but I'm, I'm like I, I well no I wanted to give this perfect product and this and, and then but somehow you have to kind of let go of that and say well that's just the energy has to be shifted to the people that you're teaching to do that and get them to be responsible for it and so on and so forth. There's, there's all the shifts of energy that have to be brought to different places, you know? Right. But then to take it a little bit further with that, when you're hiring people that, uh, you know, sometimes people will say something and it's not making sense, but, oh, they told you that, so I'm going to step into it and it falls apart. You know, because, again, the intuition, you're not trusting it. A lot of people, business people specifically, get into arrangements because it sounds like, oh, wonderful or an opportunity they can't refuse and it didn't feel right. I always say, you know, go with your gut, right? Go with that intuition and say, you know what? That opportunity, if it's right for me, it'll still be there if I kind of hang on and let me meditate or think about it, right? Mm -hmm. And then go in and tell, ask yourself. So many of us, we're so busy and our heads are always crazy with, Whereas what are we doing for dinner and work and the partners and all of that? And before you know it, we're forgetting and disconnecting from ourself. And then that's when things fall apart. But if you just quiet your mind, take 15 minutes, meditate, and then ask those questions and feel it because your body is going to tell you, right? And yeah. then that's when you make the decision on what it is that you're going to do. If you're going to hire that person or not, take that next pr promotion or that next project you know, it, it really, it will tell you. And all decisions, I the way I look at it, are right, quote unquote, yeah, because no, uh, they're it, going to teach you something, right? And that's a that's a big one right now. This 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 is one thing I do not, I, I very much struggle with about our world right now. It is, it is not black and white anymore, it's gray. Nobody wants to answer, answer a question. Nobody wants to decide on something because it's gonna be wrong, or because everything can be wrong now. Not, there's no such thing as right anymore. Well. This is the right thing to do. No, well, we'll, we'll made it. Let me look at it. So nobody wants to make a say or do anything that's right or wrong anymore, you know. And uh, in order to move ahead, right, it's really kind yeah. of scary. It's really kind of scary because if, if you can't make decisions, then, then you just can't get anywhere. And But if you make decisions, whether they're wrong or right, you're still going forward. That's because, right. But I live in that bubble of making decisions all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and I have a lot of fun. No, 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 but I have a lot of friends that they just they just can't they can't concrete say it this way because it's, they're going to get, they feel like they're insulting something or somebody or something or something they may got, you know, it just, they just can't commit to yes or no. It's, and and it's you really know, different. That's where a lot of problems are arising with health issues because yeah. let me tell you a little bit about energy and your body. So if you're not going to speak up or be selective with your words um, you know, or be an introvert. What happens is you're holding the energy in front of your throat right there. Well, there's your throat chakra. And then right there is your thyroid. And so what happens, all that energy just sits and sits and sits and sits. And you'll find that there's a lot of women that have thyroid issues. And when I start talking to them, I either, they're either an introvert or they haven't, they don't speak their truth. They're afraid or they're selective, and then that's where that can help cause you health issues. The same, the same with your stomach. So right there is your solar plexus. So if you're living in a lot of fear, then all of a sudden you're getting um, sensitive to foods or an ulcer or stomach problems because all of that energy, as in fear, sits right there. That's why you need to speak your truth. The truth is love from your heart. It's not you're intentionally hurting someone or you're ego driven. If you are, then you're probably not listening to someone like me and you. <laughs> but mm. right. No, so no it's it, it, you know, yeah. I have I have a lot of friends. I, I 
I'm humbled by it, but they come and they'll, they'll, I mean, these are pretty high powerful people, you know, dealing with hundreds of millions of dollar deals and so on and so forth. And it's like, you know, I was just thinking about you the other day, just, just going for it in your life and you just do it. And it's like, you know, it is, it is liberating. It allows you to sleep at night. It allows you to, and when I'm not thinking that way, I can't sleep at night and I can't execute and I can't grow or move forward because I'm trying to protect or say or do something, you know, um, you know, especially this day and age with social media, it's really, really a tough problem because you want to speak out, you want to say things and so on and so forth. And then you're like, Oh my God, I'm gonna lose my friends or this, or I'm going to lose business partners and stuff like that because people are selective. But in the end, <clears throat> in the end, and it, somebody kind of pointed out to me the other day, it's like, you know what? You don't want those people in your life anyway. <laughs> you don't because yeah. 20% of your 20%, what do I say? 80% of your problems come from 20% of the people, you know? Yeah. Uh, and if you have the people around you that believe in what you are, who you power, empower, they empower you, then it's great. But we're trying to be a collective a one collective and it's not really that way we're 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 a lot of collectives just doing their own thing that's right you know and uh it's 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 a it's a hard reality because we want you know this perfect world and this perfect country and this perfect you know everything but it's the reality is is we're each individual collectives and how do we how do we whether we're in business or as a as a human race how do we have these collectives and just let them be their collectives and not try to overcome other collectives or or disturb them release the judgment mm -hmm. yeah you know i played this little game years ago that i looked at everything like i could sit in this room and look at everything as just a movie nothing here is real and i'm just watching the movie so then i would say to myself what's the end result if i took all of this away and just see it as something fake the feeling right and then so if some experience that you have received, may it be having a conversation with someone or watching TV even, right, that you're left with a feeling. And so with that feeling is where you're looking at judgment and you'll find that 90% of what you see when you see it as being fake and you're, leave, you're left with the feeling, that way you can see how much judgment really is within yourself. And so like having a conversation with anyone, most people will walk in and judge their clothes or their hair, or their conversation or how they laugh when they could just hug the person and appreciate everything of who they are right there. Just everything. It doesn't matter because that person breathed their breath as they came into the earth and they made every decision for where they're standing today. And you can't judge them for any decision they made because they did it on their own with their own program patterns and their own raising and their own family and, and all of that. But here we are trying to judge someone on what we think based on our own stuff. If you just let go of all the judgment, love and honor people and allow them to sing, which is speaking openly, this world would be a great place. That it would. And it is a great place, <laughs> but it, it can be made better, right? <clears throat> well, we know, as we know, it would be an even more amazing experience to live if we could all just speak openly release our judgment and have fun really yeah so what some advice for somebody listening right now that's kind of we've kind of broken their shell a little bit they were kind of really uptight about everything in their life and they they're kind of all right they're you're believing what we're saying here today what's some advice you could help them to just kind of take that per first layer off and say you know what i can i'm just going to go out and say and do what i feel today yeah, there you go. It's trust. You know, trusting your own inner guidance system. When I was talking about, you know, people in their business and not trusting to be able to speak to someone because they don't want to hurt their feelings or being able to wear what they want or write, you know, in their own pod or excuse me, their own blogs or whatever, right? To trust when you're living heart centered, which is everyone wants to be happy and our friends and family want us to be happy too. So when that we're happy, our vibration goes up and everyone around us goes up or they go out. So in the ones that kind of follow us and their vibration goes up too, then everybody's happy and they're trusting what's going on in their life. You know, about money, everybody thinks that, you know, delete, uh, you know, not just everybody, but peep, certain people feel that money is their only survival mechanism. That's why there's a stranglehold on money when it's only energy. You have to trust beyond what you see. You have to trust beyond what you hear. I can give an example. Like if you want something in your life, maybe even something simple like a pair of shoes, right? So we think in our head 
that in order to get a new pair of shoes, we have to go to the store and buy them. Boom, that's how we get them. No, delete, delete, delete. There's thousands of different ways that you can receive a new pair of shoes. And several of them, there's that you could go to work, somebody brings them in and says, my, my neighbor gave me a pair of these Bruno shoes that you guys wear, and um, they're brand new, he doesn't want them, they're not my size, here, somebody take them, brand new pair of shoes. Or you go into a consignment store, you just happen to be waiting for your pal, and you get a new pair of shoes there. There can be the shoes that you want Brand new, can, you can receive in multiple different ways without having to have the, the, the you know, the dividers on. You know that, that that this is the only way you can see receive. If you trust beyond all of that, then your life is truly amazing. Absolutely, you know, I, you're. I, I read two books uh, religiously. It's I'll actually listen to them. I don't read them. Um, is uh, the Law of Attraction. Um, by Esther Hicks and uh, Mr. Hicks, <clears throat> who's now passed away, and also uh, The Science of Getting Rich. And you just kind of combine them both right there. Um, it's really interesting because, it, you know, obviously you have to want something, and then you have to allow the actual wanting of it. And that's, that's where a lot of us get bottlenecked is we like, we want the shoes, but we don't believe we can have them because they're out of stock or they're, they're too, too much too expensive or, you know, my size, you know, whatever. But... In reality, is all you have to do is just say, I want the shoes and um, allow it to happen and believe that it's going to come and then just let it happen. But we get, like you said, and you made a great point, is we're looking for it to come to us in a specific way. Like, I have to make that much money. Or so many times I've had, when I'm in that space of free, I've had things come and they never come the way I thought they would come. They come in different different patterns. And I've talked about this a lot, and it's it's so true that we have to let go of the fact that, well, I think the million dollars are going to come this way. I'm going to make the best sneaker in the world, I'm going to sell it, and I'm going to make a million dollars. Well, you might end up making the million dollars on the sticker that you put on the sneaker because it's a great logo, and it might, so, or the shoelaces that you designed for the Shoe shoes that, 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 that went in with these amazing, you know, elastic, non, you know, they don't get dirty shoelaces or whatever, so... It's like there's there's always like and it's always the the the, the thing you never think it's going to make that happen, you know. So um, even in my businesses alone, I know I used to constantly do these over oversee researches of what I had going, and, and I was like, okay, well my company has assets. They're sitting around for 60, 70 percent of the year because they're they're only specifically used in this part of the year, but they, yet they cost a lot of money. How can they be used? Well, it turns out we end up renting them to Hollywood, or we end up you know, using as props in different movies and so on and so forth. And we would get three times the value. We'd, 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 I used to have these special events I did with these athletes and we'd bring them. So we'd have to pay all these professional athletes and fly them in and we'd have to do all this. This, this turns out they, would just, they just wanted the asset. They just wanted the asset to be there as a ramp. And they would pay us three times more than a person that would want the show with the athletes. Yeah. <laughs> this is no <laughs> athletes. This is, we just need something in the background, you know? So, you know, we'd get $12,000 versus $4,000 because they have gigantuan amounts of money and these guys over here only it's a fair or an event they only have three four thousand dollars money so it's just really interesting how you can handle what you really have in front of you yeah and then you trust it into it you know you have an asset like you said how can i use this in a different way that could enhance someone else's life think about it the more that you enhance other people the more that it comes back to you triple fold right and so you were easily said, okay, how can I use this when I'm not using it? And how can I help someone else? And whammo, there you go. And it just came to you. So that's truly when you're fully connected to that, trusting your thoughts, trusting what, um, you know, you could generate and create, stepping into those decisions, making those decisions, right? We talked about making decisions and stepping into them and then going with that and knowing that it's just a decision, right? And you're moving forward. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. So one more question here before we end. Um, I can see that you're an amazing coach and intuitive. And at what point did you decide that this is what I'm going to derive my income from? What I mean, there's got to be this time and space or moment or minute or day or week or a collection of things that, that really made you decide that this is specifically what I'm going to be doing. You know, I... Um... I was in a 14 year relationship and I had a spiritual epiphany at 3 a.m. and my whole life changed. I um, 
I was really wanting love and I wasn't getting it. And to be with someone next to someone, seeing someone every day and not feel love is so miserable. And so truly that's what I want. And I woke up at that 3 a.m. and I, I, I had a complete sense of calmness. Stars were so close I could touch them. I'll never forget the moment when I heard, love will come. I swear God was talking to me. My life changed completely the very next day. And I literally started reading, and Esther and Gary Hicks were my psychic 101, I call it. I started with them because it's really entry level to help you understand. And, and I was reading two and three books at the time, at all at the same time. It was crazy. I was reading so much. I was doing all of these um, courses and webinars and everything in different modalities. I uh, trained with some masters in healing. And then I realized, you know what? That when your nine to five gets in the way, from what your passion is, then you just step into it. And I literally knew that all of this stuff with that nine to five, and I was making six figures. And I'm like, okay, what do you do? And it was in my way in order for me to step up and create. And once I let it go, I literally blew up with creating online products. I have a sales funnel. I'm in the middle of writing my book now. I have uh, my one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do a 12-month coaching course about teaching people exactly what I do. I do a group energy clearing locally. So, I mean, I do a group energy online. So I have all these different avenues, but it totally exploded. And so I knew that when I got to the point, as I said, and something else was holding me back, which was the nine to five. It was time to step into it. But really it was that, spiritual epiphany that I had when I was at the end of a 14 year relationship. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. That was really Thank beautiful. Thank you yeah. for asking. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Terry, Christine, this is already time. <laughs> it's gone by so fast. <laughs> and, um, can people find out about you where? So they can find me on my Facebook and Twitter at Terry Christine and my website, terrychristine.com where they can actually download a free Theta Stream meditation with Theta Sound that takes them to the deeper levels of the mind. So that's a really awesome um, opt-in uh, offer that they can get. And I do offer a 20-minute complimentary session too, so they can find that on my website. Awesome. Well, I think if they listened to or watched, they can listen and watch this video here, well, this podcast, uh, they certainly will get a good sense of who you are. Uh, this, if this doesn't sell you, then I don't know what will. <laughs> so, thank you. So yeah, so I think, sweet. well, you're just genuine and you're honest and you're got a good mission and, uh, obviously it's a great product and, um, that you're selling, uh, is, is that, that epiphany, that intuition. And, uh, if people understood what intuition is and had a better, better idea of how to utilize it. It really is a life changer because I know it's right. done, done a lot for me. So that's right. Awesome. Absolutely. Right on Dennis. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So, all right, we're going to cut you guys off. We're going to go talk after, after the mic, but um, thank you guys for all listening here today. And um, it's been a really pleasure. And I totally appreciate everybody that listens each and every time um, to the five minute bark podcast. Um, so many good things, so many different, uh, Guests have come on the show and, and shared great things, just as Terry has done here today. And I hope you reach out to her, at least uh, message her and say thank you for sharing here today. And I also want to thank some of my sponsors out there. Um, Forgotten Flag Raisers has um, come out with a movie that's an amazing movie. I know we did several episodes before this on um, veterans of the United States Army. And this movie's about some of those people here. And we've also got a, not only a free DVD, but a T, actually, I shouldn't say it's free. Uh, what they're offering for people that want to help them uh, promote this movie, a T-shirt that says Raising Awareness. I love the T-shirt. It helped in the involvement of designing it and their movie. So uh, for nine, I believe it's $19. So you can find that at um, podcast.codydog.com. So if you want to help support this podcast, support our sponsors, I totally appreciate you checking out that movie. Uh, it's really, um, it's not just about... Uh, the raising of the flags in Urajima. It's it's more than that. It's about uh, humans that have been involved in the military lifestyle. And uh, asked after interviewing people um, that are military uh, people, they're amazing people. They're really uh, devoted, dedicated people to our country and to others. Uh, and quite honestly, I found them as more as as motivating as Tony Robbins because these people have uh, learned a 
a, a um, lifestyle and a accountability that none of us here in the social world <laughs> abide by, you know, team, teamwork and so on and so forth. So check that out, everybody, at podcast.codydog.com. And also thank you again, Terry, for Christine, for coming on here today and having some fun with us. So, Thanks, Dennis. I appreciate it. Uh, bye, everybody. You're watching the 5-Minute Bark Podcast on YouTube. If you like this episode, you just may like many more. Subscribe today by clicking the red subscribe button in the top right-hand corner.